that's what's great when I interview actors there. They understand. Take two. Take two. <laughs> Same energy, something else? What would you like? No, nah, we're all good. I love this energy. <laughs> Ella, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having but, me. Congratulations on, uh, on this movie. How do you guys know each other? We hunt together. Okay. They scream. Oh. This is a, a modern take on the vampire genre, and uh, and your character is uh, is a vampire. Yeah, no, we uh, more and more I discovered how fun it is that we delved into this rendition of vampires who aren't super wealthy, aren't very lavish or affluent. They're kind of scavengers, and we we loot from the dead. We sort of pick on people who are a bit low life, like. It's not glamorous, you know? And uh, I think that was a really fun take to do with the vampires, that they're kind of these, they're kind of loners, you know? You're around for three centuries, it gets a bit lonely and they only have each other. There's the scene in the movie where all the vampires talk about their mothers and none of them really remember their moms. And so we sort of played a lot with these ideas of, of what, it, what are actually the implications of living for so long, you know, that you don't even remember what your mom is like. I think I'm gonna lay off for a while. You can't lay off. Then I guess I'll have to kick all together. Maybe I'll become human again. You can't change, Anna. You haven't fed and it's messing with your health. Picking blood in terms of the vampire genre, what do you think it is that we are so attracted to, to this genre? That's such a great question. I think for us, vampires are much less of sort of like a genre tool or, or an aesthetic thing as much as they are more of like a symbolic tool to help us these this exactly what you're saying this kind of this archetype that we seem to adore in films and i think what the film does really really well is picking and choosing the the vampire tropes and also even creating our own that that kind of specifically help the the message that we're trying to put through and i mean you know, like they don't sleep in coffins, they sleep in regular beds. They're right, you know, like they're not crazy yeah. or anything. And, and But they still have to be invited in. I think the idea that you invite in this person that will feed on you is a very, very cool idea. And it's something that we all do. Hey, man. I'm sleeping on a vampire's couch. Like an emotional vampire? The concept of a vampire could be kind of like, you know, kind of scary. So are <laughs> you in real life someone who is like, you know, into like, you can handle those kind of scary things or like horror, or are you like a scaredy cat like moi? I'm a little bit of a scaredy cat. I, I can't I can't handle too much gore. This is my thing. It's like I I uh, if I see something with really graphic gore, I'm like this the whole time. It really depends on which horror we're, gonna, we're talking about. And what's nice for me about this movie is that there's not too much gore. You know, there's blood obviously, but it's not it's not too graphic. And I right. and I appreciate that. I think it takes away from it a bit if it's if it's too gory. Then you can eat your popcorn and enjoy it, right? That's the exactly. Whole point. You don't feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Kill him, or we will. Go away. This movie, A Kicking Blood, it is a must see. Everybody, check it out. And congratulations on all your success. Uh, you're so lovely. Thank you so much, Ella, for being here. Thanks, Melissa. It was so lovely talking to you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media at Melissa DeMarco for more exclusive content with your favorite celebs. I'll see you guys out there.